Hello everyone and welcome to the next installment of the EVCraft Business Pack uh, Let's Play tutorial series. Uh, you may notice that a few things have changed since we last stopped. This is because I had actually recorded uh, another Let's Play episode and unfortunately it, uh, it screwed up and uh, none of the video was actually recorded, just the audio. Uh, I really don't want to have to redo everything all over again, so I'm just going to give you the uh, the short version of most of this stuff. Um, first off, we've got our uh, our first industrial craft machines. We have a generator here. Generators are used to supply the initial electricity to any other machines we create. Uh, generators are created uh, using a battery some iron plates and an iron furnace. All of these can be found uh, in NEI for your recipes. I, I will be explaining how to make the iron plates as well as uh, the cables that are used in both machines and for wiring the machines together, but I will uh, explain that as I start creating uh, new machines. This is the extractor. Now uh, the extractor take sticky resin which is what we collect from uh, these rubber trees which I'll show you shortly as well and it converts them into rubber now if you don't have an extractor and you need some rubber to uh, get started which will happen uh, you can actually take that sticky resin and just melt it in a furnace uh, but using an extractor you get three times the amount of rubber per resin so this is easily one of the first things you want to get to uh, make your machine building days easier. Uh, this last item here is an electric furnace. Uh, it's exactly how it sounds. It just smelts whatever I need to have smelted and uh, it just uses power provided by the generator or any other uh, industrial craft power source that I use. Underneath uh, all the machines I have uh, insulated tin cable which I'll be showing you how to make again as well. Uh, basically this cable takes power from the generator and passes it to all the other machines. Uh, one thing I will note uh, is if you are familiar with industrial craft, generators can actually provide power to machines that are directly adjacent to them without requiring a cable. So for example, if I took this extractor and I put it where the strip block is, the generator could provide power directly to it. The reason why I have them separated is because with the new uh, setup, how industrial craft works, uh, managing the voltage that's used in, uh, in the machines is much, much more important. Uh, every type of generator has a different level of energy they produce. Uh, if uh, you use a generator that produces too much energy on a machine without the right um, without the right capacities, you will blow up the machine and lose everything that's in it and the machine itself. So, um, but in the old school uh, uh, industrial craft, as long as you could use as many generators as you want, as long as each one individually uh, was within the same voltage range as the other machines. Now, if you have too many different sources uh, providing energy to a machine, that all accumulates and will blow up your machines as well. So, uh, back to my point, the reason why they're separated is so then that way I don't worry about the generator supplying power directly to a machine and then the cabling I have underneath supplying more power to the machine, potentially overloading it and exploding it. All right. Uh, First, I will uh, quickly show you the rubber. These are industrial craft rubber trees. Uh, I've actually pruned these a little bit already. Here's uh, some that have grown that I haven't touched yet. Uh, you will notice these little orange uh, rectangles on it. This is basically an indicator that there is sticky resin on this block on this tree. In order to get the sticky resin, you effectively create a tree tap. which is here, which is basically just five planks of any type of wood in this pattern gets you a tree tap. Tree taps uh, have a durability and they don't last very long, uh, but you can actually upgrade them, which is something that we'll do in a further episode. Um, so all you do is you take your tree tap, you right click on the block that has the uh, orange rectangle there, and some sticky resin pops out. Um, trees can have multiple 
sets of resin on them. Uh, this one apparently does not, uh, but also the resin does respawn, so if you wait a day or two in game, uh, that rectangle should pop back up. Uh, different trees have different spawn points for resin, but one thing to keep in mind is typically uh, on a particular tree, once it's grown, the resin will keep coming back to the same spot. So I'm just going to collect a little bit more here because rubber is one of those things we're going to need a lot of. Uh, you can chop down these trees to get a little bit of resin, but ultimately you will actually get more if you're just using the tree taps because as you saw in that last uh, piece of resin that I got, I actually got three pieces instead of just one out of the block. So we'll just throw these in here.
all down so you can actually hear me. Alright, so first we'll make our basic machine casing, which goes like this. Now this is why I always have multiple uh, crafting tables here, is so when I'm working on a complicated recipe like this metal former, I can have basically one spot that allows me to put the recipe together as I get the pieces built so I don't have to keep remembering what I have or haven't uh, uh, crafted so far. So even though I have the cables in order to make the uh, the electronic circuit, I'm going to show you how to make these cables yourself. Uh, first thing we're going to do is some copper. doesn't look like I have, there we go, I'll have to uh, grind some of this up, now to make six, basically out of each copper ingot you can make two cables, so I'm going to need at least three ingots to make the cables that I need. We've got four here, that's enough for now. Alright, and so while we wait for that, uh, I'll show you how to make the, uh, the cables. To start off, you have to make a plate of the metal that you want. So in this case, we need copper cable, so we're going to make a copper plate. That is done by a copper ingot and the forge hammer in a crafting station. And then you take the plate that you created, use the cutter, and that makes your cables. Now, you can also see we need to have the cables insulated. They need a piece of rubber around them. So in order to do that, you just take the cables, any rubber that you've either smelted or uh, got it out of an extractor, and uh, you put that next to it, and there's your insulated cables. That simple. So we'll get the rest of these ingots. I'm not too worried about using all this copper to make cables because you are going to need a lot of copper cables in your day. So, now we need to make an electronic circuit. The electronic circuit, again, is this recipe. So we're only going to create one this time. I don't want to use up the rest of my materials. So we have one electronic circuit. And we'll toss that in here. And now we get on to some of the more complicated stuff. First, we will make the coils. The coils are created each by having eight co uninsulated copper cables around with an iron ingot in the middle. So we're going to need a lot more copper and we are going to need some more iron ingots. see that uh, we have more sticky resin available. It's very important to get as much of this as possible um, when you're first starting out. So, uh, you know, whenever you see that, go ahead and grab it because it does take a few days for it to respawn. things I will show you in a little while is a lot of the tools you can use in industrial craft um, have electronic versions as well. Now what the electronic versions do is they use energy uh, as their durability rather than actual durability. So 
those equipment will never actually break. But you do have to recharge them from time to time, uh, you know, using power. They are ultimately a better tool, but because we are limited on our power availability right now, I'm just going to uh, manually do this. It's only using a few pieces of wood for this tree tap. It's not a big deal. Now one thing I should mention, if you're not familiar with industrial craft, uh, the machines operate a little bit differently uh, in terms of re removing them. Uh, you can't, most blocks, you know, you can just take your pickaxe and you can just, um, you know, you can just go and, well this would be better with this regular axe, but you basically use a tool, you break it down, you pick the thing up. With industrial craft machines, if you do that, you will only get the basic casing back, meaning the one component, you know, just basically, you're getting a metal block back. Uh, you'll lose all the extra components and you actually lose the machine itself. If you want to actually remove a machine, you need one of two things. You, you basically need a wrench. Uh, now, if you look up in NEI, there's multiple wrenches. The wrench that you want here is either this bronze wrench here or an electric wrench. Of course, the electric wrench is actually crafted from the bronze wrench along with an additional component, so this would be what you'd be using to make your initial wrench, uh, which basically consists of bronze and gods. Bronze is crafted by taking uh, tin dust and three iron dust, or sorry, three copper dust, and putting them uh, in a crafting table and each combination of one tin and three copper that you put in there will create two bronze dust. Um, I will show that in a little while, but you need at least this basic tool to remove machines. Um, if you're not using an electric wrench, there is still a chance removing the machine will still destroy it and you'll only get the casing back, but it's um, I think it's like a 10% chance, so it's really not that bad as opposed to uh, using a pickaxe, which is guaranteed you're going to destroy your machine. So now that we have our copper, I'm going to go here and we will create our cable, well, our plates, and then from there we'll make our cable. three more copper to finish this off. Or three more cables, I should say. for that. I will chop down a few more trees because we need a ton of trees to maintain our fuel supply until we get into some better power generation methods. And I am running pretty low. So again, make our plates, we convert our plates into cable, and now we have enough to make our coils. Or, wait, no, we need three coils, so three 
times 8 is 24, so we actually need more ingots. <laughs> That's my failure in math today. We also should get some extra copper because we will need bronze for the uh, the toolboxes, which I'll be showing you shortly. And as I mentioned, you need both tin and bronze dust in order to, or sorry, tin and copper dust in order to make bronze dust. So I'm not going to smelt all the copper dust that I'm producing here. for that stuff to smelt, I'll just show you the recipe for bronze. It's basically one tin in the, on the top left, and then being surrounded by copper dust, and that makes two bronze dust. And looking at the recipe for toolboxes, I believe we need, okay, we need bronze item casings. Uh, I'll show you casings in a moment, but uh, effectively you are going to need uh, one dust, one bronze dust per two casings. So if we need five here and two, we need ten uh, dust all together, so we need, uh, yeah, we need ten dust, five dust all together, I should say. So that won't take too much. that we're kind of going through right now creating these initial machines is probably the slowest part of uh, getting everything set up. Once we've got the metal former done we can actually start moving into more of our automated or processing mechanics and that then starts making things happen a lot lot faster. want to wrench so I'm going to go ahead and take all this bronze dust while that smelts we will make the rest of the cables we need all right so now we have enough cables to do everything Also need I believe it's iron ingots in the middle of this, so I'm going to have to crush a little bit of iron. This is all we're going to need to make our coils. Just do that. Alright, so now 
it's just the toolboxes we need. And the toolboxes, if you remember, is uh, made with uh, bronze casing surrounded by a chest. And in order to make bronze casings, you basically take your forge hammer and you make plates. I'm only going to need five for this. And then you actually take those plates, put it back in with the forge hammer, and that produces casings. And uh, it's the same recipe for any type of metal format, so if you need to do tin casings or iron casings, you just repeat that process just with that particular type of metal. Alright, so now we need some chests. Which is standard Minecraft recipe here. Just around, around this with uh, planks of any type of wood, and there are our chests. And there we get our toolboxes. We we'll put the toolboxes in here, and we now have our metal former. I'll just pop that here. And uh, now we actually did this really well because my four chamber has one use left. If I use this up. I'm going to have to uh, use another 5 iron to be able to do a anything just to make that tool. So the metal farmer um, now will use energy uh, as opposed to durability to create these things. Uh, basically you take whatever ingot you have, I will show you here, uh, the copper ingots. Um, this functions slightly differently now. You don't have to, uh, there are three modes here. You've got rolling, which obviously uses the forge hammer. Uh, you've got cutting, which replicates the cutter, so you would use that on plates in order to make your wires. And then you've got one called extrude, extruding. This does a few different things, but the one you'll most commonly use this for is for making uh, uh, casings for water and other fluids. And I will show that in a further episode exactly how that works. But for now, we need uh, to create more copper cables, so I'm going to take this copper, put it into the machine, and you notice now, now it's working, and it'll start creating its plates. So I can just leave that alone. Take this rubber, and uh, now we're actually going to start on the ore processing side of things. So the first thing we're going to want is a macerator, which is basically just a fancy name for an ore crusher. In order to create this, we need three flint, we need two cobblestone, a basic machine casing, and an electronic circuit. Flint, uh, in case you're unaware, is a vanilla item that happens from uh, smashing up gravel. So if you just go around the world and you dig up gravel, you'll occasionally get flint as opposed to uh, gravel ore. Um, but uh, if you don't want to spend a lot of time hunting for that stuff and you don't have the flint yet, like for example we are missing one, uh, you can actually make it happen automatically. If you had a macerator already you could put gravel into the macerator uh, to get gravel, uh, to get flint, but since we don't have that yet we are just going to use the grindstone. Now you'll notice that the uh, the crank popped off there. That happens if you right click on the crank and there's nothing that needs to be ground. Um, there is a bug right now that if you do that, for whatever reason, the crank just disappears. You'll notice I don't have it anywhere in my inventory. So in order to use the grindstone, I'm going to have to uh, create a new crank. It's only a handful of sticks, so it's really not a big deal for me, uh, but that's just something to keep in mind. So we have our flint, and we're just going to drop these again in our final combined table. And then we need some cobblestone, which we have plenty of. And now we need an electronic circuit and some machine casings. So the electronic circuit again is 
uh, six copper cables, two redstone, and an iron plate. There we go. And the iron casing, or the uh, basic machine casing, is a bunch of iron plates, which we don't have any extras of right now. So we're going to have to crush a little bit more iron dust. So you'll notice we're already running a little bit low on charcoal. Uh, that's simply because uh, ideally I would have a second electronic furnace uh, so that I could be consistently producing more charcoal at this stage. But this really is enough for now. Um, we'll just pop some wood in here as soon as uh, these ingots are done. That's going we'll crush a little bit more iron. thing you will notice is this machine is flickering a little bit and uh, the energy bar is basically down. It is still working but you notice there's adds out of energy. That is because the generator only outputs so much energy at a time. Uh, I believe it's uh, 10 EU per tick. Uh, EU is basically industrial crafts electrical unit um, type, type of measurement. But what's happening is every machine along the line, if it's only producing 10 EU a tick, it, and I'll just show you the cable here, it comes out of the cable at the bottom of the generator, starts moving along here, then it puts anything that's necessary into the extractor, anything that's necessary into the furnace, and then it puts anything that's left over into the metal former here. So what's happening is because this furnace is going full speed right now, it's sucking up the majority of energy that's being produced along this line here. And so the metal former is getting, you know, a little bit, uh, is getting basically the scraps of whatever's left over. This basically means that as we add more machines, it's going to become less and less efficient until we add either additional power sources or we improve our, uh, our electrical network here. Uh, now you will see that the energy is filling back up. This is simply because the metal former is done, so now it's just taking those scraps and putting it into its internal reserve. So we have enough iron plates now to make our basic machine casing. And ta-da! We have our macerator. And now I am going to show you What I'm putting down here is insulated tin cable. It's basically made the same way as the copper cable, just using tin instead of copper. Um, every cable uh, can hold a certain amount of voltage, uh, tin cable being the lowest, uh, then moves up to copper, uh, gold, and uh, I believe iron after that, if I remember correctly. And, oh wait, no, sorry, there is no gold. I lied about that just go straight to iron. Now one of the uh, questions you might ask is well if um, 
you know, if tin can only handle, you know, a lower voltage and using iron does higher, why not just put a whole bunch of iron cables in here? The reason being that it's twofold, actually. The first is, by having these cables uh, basically max out at the low voltage setting, which is 32 EU a tick, uh, it guarantees that if I accidentally put a really large... Uh, power generator somewhere on this network, it will blow the cables before it blows my uh, machines. So that will actually save me a lot of headache if I accidentally do that. Then on top of that, as electricity travels along the cables, there is some lossage, meaning that the longer this cable gets, the more power is required to be taken from the generator to get to the machine. Even if no other machines were here and that it was just traveling along the cable, if it leaves say 10 EU uh, from here, it might only be 80 EU by the time it reaches here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the loss is um, with the new version of Industrial Craft, but there is a loss attached to it. Um, now with the higher types of cable, you, uh, there's the higher voltage, but the loss is higher as well. So if I say lose 2 EU along here on 10, if I use iron, that might be 4 or 5 EU when I'm losing per tick, which is a lot of energy I don't want to lose right now. But, uh, so for now we'll pop our macerator up, and I'm going to show you why I didn't create a macerator right from the very beginning. Uh, the macerator is basically the electronic version of this grindstone, which sounds like it'd be absolutely amazing, and in uh, the original industrial have changed. And I'm going to show you exactly how they've changed. Take, uh, take this, we're just going to put one iron into here. Power. This way. Uh, power is up. It looks like my last update might have fixed this now that I'm looking at this. Uh, in a previous update when we were testing this, uh, the pressure handler actually won't work in the electronic furnace. Uh, before what would wind up happening is you had to wash it, which is the process I'm going to show you shortly, in order to actually get this thing to happen. So it turns out you actually could do the mass reader a little bit sooner now that they've actually uh, updated the uh, industrial craft version to allow you to smell this faster. So, ignore what I've said for the last 20 minutes. Um, but, uh, this is still not the most efficient way to deal with your horse, but obviously it will make life a little bit easier compared to using the grindstone.
So, what we're going to do then is we're going to set this up. We're going to need lots of copper. Similar things we're washing some of the other types of papers. So we're going to start creating that now. Now the ore washing machine is actually our, uh, our first machine that's a huge power drain on us. So even though it will help us with our ores, it's one of those machines that very quickly is going to, uh, to drain our power system out uh, significantly. So I'm going to it, but you probably won't see me using it too much at the start of this. Uh, the main reason why I done things the way I did is because I'd been expecting for us to acquire it in order to properly use the macerator, which as I just mentioned, doesn't seem to be the need now. So the ore washing system is kind of like the next stage, the next evolution in terms of expanding how much metal you get out of the same ore, um, but it requires a little bit better set up So with that in mind, uh, this uh, recording is getting pretty long. I am going to end this here. Uh, you basically now have the basics of industrial craft and setting up all these machines, getting your metal former, setting up the plates and cutting, as well as using the macerator. Uh, obviously you could uh, create the macerator a little bit sooner than this process. Just to save yourself a right click on the grindstone. Uh, next episode, we are going to start diverging into some more expensive power generation techniques and, uh, and basically making this a lot more of uh, self sufficient. Alright, that's, that's wonderful. Again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, contact us on the server or you can 